Um, All right, the next uh, witness is listed, Mr. Chairman. Please. Okay. Our Dr. Radoslav Stojanovic and Mr. Slobodan Vuskovic, who, uh, Vuskovic, I'm sorry, um, who will take the table now. Uh, Dr. Stojanovic is a Fulbright uh, These two are both very important, Mr. Chairman, because uh, they're both active in the Democrat Party which is engaged in opposing the present regime and will have candidates in the future free elections in Yugoslavia. Uh, Mr. Stojanovic, Dr. Stojanovic is a Fulbright Scholar. He's a professor of international law, a faculty of law at the University of Belgrade. He's the author of several books and many articles published in Yugoslavia and abroad. He taught international relations at many universities, including Harvard, Yale, and Mellon. He's a member of the executive committee of the Democratic Party in Belgrade. Mr. Vucicovic, is an attorney at law who studied in France and at Florida University in Tallahassee. He's a member of the presidency of the Serbian Bar Association, a former deputy member of the Municipal Council in Belgrade. He's now an independent member of the Serbian National Assembly in Belgrade, a member of the Na legislative committee of this assembly, and executive member of the Democratic Party, which fights for human rights and democracy in Yugoslavia. Dr. Stojanovic. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Stojanovic and Mr. Vuckovic. We are very pleased to have you. Any prepared statement we will enter in the record in, uh, in its entirety, and you may proceed in your own way. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Bentley. Put Could your you pull the up. mic uh, closer to you, okay, please? Thank you. I am not aware. Okay, good. Okay. In this respected house of democracy and freedom, we are discussing human rights in Yugoslavia and more particularly in Kosovo province. Why in Kosovo provinces more particularly? Why Albanians are more persecuted than others in Yugoslavia? I am going to answer the question and please listen to me. <clears throat> During the visit of the Co uh, Helsinki Commission <clears throat> to Kosovo was the state of emergency, now terminated. I am not going to talk about the past, about the conflicts within, with Albanians since their conversion to Islam during the 18th century, which confronted them to Serbs who themselves remained Christians in the Ottoman Empire. Instead, I will speak about the present conflict, which took place in 1980, one with the rebellion of Albanians in Kosovo. The Albanians, namely, wanted to secession from Serbia as a state. The Albanian nationalistic movement did not voice openly its intention to breaking away also from Yugoslavia. We may even suppose that they, in fact, did not want it. However, there is no doubt that they did want to secede from the Republic of Serbia through the creation of a separate Republic of Kosovo. Serbia is a state and Kosovo is the part of the state. Kosovo has been and still is within Serbia since 1912 and this was recognized by international documents, international treaties. On the other hand, Yugoslavia has been transformed by constitution of 1974 into real confederation where member states have acquired sovereign rights in the decision-making process at, at the federal level since each one of them is entitled to a veto in enacting most significant laws and international treaties. In such a way, the federal constitution of 1974 has deprived Serbia of its sovereign rights, since both provinces Kosovo and Vojvodina were able to veto all bills and international treaties concluded by Serbia. In such a way, the con that constitution has segmented Yugoslavia, and especially Serbia. It is entirely clear to everyone that such a Yugoslavia is on its way to total disintegration into God knows how many independent states. 
both according to the Constitution of Serbia of 1974 and to the Federal Constitution Vojvodina and Kosovo have become entirely independent from Serbia in the spheres of le legislative, executive, and judicial powers. The amendments to the Constitution of Serbia effected in 1989 coincided with the introduction to the state of emergency which was forced by the mass rebellion of Albanian in Kosovo. But these amendments in no way have restricted the autonomy of Kosovo, their primary goal being the restitution of the minimum of jurisdiction of Serbia otherwise recognized anywhere in the world as a state. An autonomous province located in a state cannot have the same jurisdiction as a such state since this would mean a realm within the realm. But this unfortunately has precisely been the case with Serbia in the 1974 1989 period. The revolt of Albanians, terror and violence which followed such revolt have been justified in world press by the allegation that the Albanians were fighting to preserve the autonomy taken away from them by Serbia. However, the autonomous province of Kosovo continues to have the following rights. First, it is an entitled to enact independently its constitution, while Serbia has no po power of vetoing it. Second, functioning of a complete state apparatus of power just as in all other republics of Yugoslavia. Third, independence of legislative power, the acts of the province cannot, however, to contrary to the constitutions of Yugoslavia and Serbia. Fourth, executive branch of province is the only one is only one competent for the implementation of prov provincial, republican, and federal legis legislative acts. Fifth, the province has also its financial autonomy, including its national bank. Sixth. Kosovo has the judicial autonomy. The Sup Supreme Co Court of Kosovo is the supreme judicial body. Seventh, full language autonomy coupled with equality between all languages spoken in Kosovo. Eighth, according to the federal constitution, Kosovo is entitled to veto the most significant international treaties. Thus, should Serbia want to conclude an international treaty, Kosovo may, at the federal level, prevent such conclusion by using its veto power. Nine, also, according to the federal constitution, Kosovo may block, by using veto power, the enactment of most important laws in the federal parliament. Ten, according to the federal constitution, the authorities on Kosovo are the only ones competent for the implementation of the federal laws and the laws enacted in the Serbian parliament. Eleventh, finally, the parliament of Kosovo may, through its veto, prevent the amending of the constitution of Yugoslavia or the enactment of a new constitution in fact, this is exactly what happened a few days ago. The Yugoslav federal government has proposed several amendments vital for the realization of the current economic reforms in Yugoslavia, but the Kosovo parliament has failed to adopt this document. So, as a result, the federal constitution cannot be amended. Obviously, only one conclusion may, may follow. The autonomous province of Kosovo has today much more power than any other federal state, state or unit in the world. I permit myself a, compa a comparison. How would the American Congress and Senate react? Should, for instance, North Carolina be entitled to veto the conclusion of a treaty between the United States and the USSR are on trade and commerce. One may ask whether the requests 
of the Albanian nationalistic movement in Kosovo concerning the preservation of autonomy are genuine. There is no doubt whatsoever that Kosovo enjoys today a much larger, higher degree of autonomy than is known is contemporary theory and practice. What they really want is the secession, secession from Serbia. And here another compa comparison is due. Would the American state of California or Florida or any other state permit the secession of a part of their territory where an ethnic group, Hispanos for instance, should become a majority population through immigration or enormous birth rate? Serbia, on the other hand, has to be transformed. We think that, and I am supporter of this policy. Serbia has to be support to a democratic country, to a democratic state, and parliamentary state, where all citizens should enjoy all human, civil, and political rights. I do think that national question is predominantly the question of democracy. And therefore, therefore, it is necessary to initiate the talks with democratically elected representatives of the Albanian people in Kosovo, finding thus, thus a way to live together in a democratic state. But all participants of such talks have to be aware that the basis for discussion is clear. There can be no discussions or negotiations on territorial and state integrity of Serbia. Once this platform is accepted by the Albanian representatives, all other conflicts will be gradually resolved. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. Butchkovic. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, thank you. I will speak uh, about Serbian victims as up. well uh, as uh, about. Uh, hello? Uh, I speak about Serbian victims and uh, on the possibility of the democratic solution in Kosovo. My paper has uh, uh, four pages, I think. You will let me pronounce. The modern ethnic Albanian separatist movement in Yugoslavia and in Kosovo it is based on three main facts. First, the intention, intention of the hardline communist regime in People's Republic of Albania to annex a part of the Yugoslav territory within ethnic Albanian population. Second, the intention of the international Islamic fundamentalism to make in Kosovo, its basis for further expansion in Europe. And third, a continuation of the policy of the former communist international organization, Comintern, to destroy Yugoslavia, which exists still in the hardline communist ideology. As a result, a considerable number of secret ethnic Albanian separatist groups with a relatively large number of members have been formed. Since 1980, for example, 103 such groups have been discovered with a total number of 1,710 members, out of which 948 were condemned for criminal acts by the ethnic Albanian judges. <coughs> Having in view the level of the violence and the number of unpunished criminal acts, it can be estimated that the number of such groups and members is several times larger. All these groups seem to be tightly connected and led from a single center. Due to the financial support from the international Albanian organizations, from the fundamentalist regimes and from illegal distribution of narcotics, their financial power is considerable. As a result, they are very well armed 
and by pressure, threatening, and blackmail, they managed to force much larger number of ethnic Albanians to join them. Actions of ethnic Albanian separatists. Robberies, aggravated assaults and batteries, spreading of national hatred and crimes against human rights. In last eight years, total 469. Arsons, 1,364 out of which 46 arsons of Serbian Orthodox Christian churches and monasteries, only in the period of four years. Sabotage, 488, including power stations, power and telephone lines, factories, transportation facility, etc. Period 189. Blocking railway lines, 145 cases, period 81-89. Sabotage against Yugoslav army, seven, seven cuts of telephone and telegraph lines, last eight years. Sacrileges of Serbian Orthodox churches and graves, 307 uh, for 82 until 87. Crimes against police forces, 14 policemen killed and 798 wounded, 68-89. Arms seized from ethnic Albanian separatists in last 20 years, 16,700 firearms and hand grenades. Recent terrorist actions, January 26th of this year, Mr. Chairman, February 2nd of this year, in only seven days, in 55 villages and towns in Kosovo, uh, where attacked the police forces by, by firearms, firearms and grenades. The result of organized demonstrations in the mentioned period was three wounded policemen, 80 assaults and batteries on policemen 27 dead and 87 wounded and 21 injured demonstrators and separatists. 78 damages of vehicles, three damaged trucks, one helicopter, eight police cars, and a large number of damages, houses, shops, private cars, etc. The question is, is In such circumstances, is it possible a democratic solution in Kosovo? I think yes. The main problem is to find out the roots uh, of separatist movement. The movement has existed for a long time, but uh, it was never so strong until last 25 years. During President Tito's time, the Yugoslav communist authorities followed without exception the slogan, the weaker the Serbian Republic, the stronger Yugoslavia. It should be pointed out that the development of multi-party system is inevitable. Different political views have to be presented according to the interests of every class or group. It is very likely that a system of this kind is the only one which can mitigate the nationalism and lead the country and society into a prosperous fruit future. In such a free society, all forms of negotiations can take place. There is only one issue which cannot be discussed and which has to be clear to everybody. Kosovo has always been an integral part of the Serbian state. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will now ask uh, Congressman Diogardi to introduce uh, uh, various individuals that, uh, that uh, he has arranged to come up here. We'd be very happy to have you join us up here.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, we've had many people come many miles, I guess, for, from both uh, sides of the street in Kosovo, and we have here with us some of the most active initiators of democracy, movements for human rights in Kosovo, Albanians. And I want to introduce the first panel, Dr. Ibrahim Rogova, would you step to the table, please? And Professor Gazman Pula. No? Luton. Dr. Rogova. Uh, Professor Pula. Uh, Dr. Rogova, I think, is in the back. He has to come forward. Yes. Dr. Agova has been under very strict security since he got off the plane. He has to travel with the State Department security people and the FBI in a bulletproof limousine. So you can imagine, for whatever reason, that's the kind of life Dr. Agova has to live in order to deliver his message of, of freedom. Um, he is a writer, a professor, someone who feels strongly about his people in Kosovo. And um, he's right now president of the Democratic Alliance. It may be perhaps the largest democratic movement right now in the country of Yugoslavia. It has now almost 700,000 members in Kosovo. Uh, over 100,000 of them were card-carrying communists who have burned their Communist Party cards. So we can see that at least democracy is in its embryonic stages in Kosovo. In any case, uh, I have Professor Gazman Pula, also a professor at the University of Pristina. He initiated the Pristina Group Chapter of the Yugoslav Helsinki Committee. Uh, he's also a spokesperson today for Dr. Zekaria Tsana uh, on behalf of the Council for the Defense of Human Rights and Freedoms in Kosovo. He has a very lengthy paper which he will, Mr. Chairman, submit to the record uh, outlining very specific uh, acts of violence against uh, ethnic Albanians in Kosovo. And he will also be, act as an interpreter for uh, Dr. Rogova. Again, gentlemen, the hour is late. I know you came long. We have over 500 Albanians outside waiting for us and waiting to see you. So I would again stress, as Congressman Lantos did, to make the points that must be made and to submit other information for the record. I turn it back to you. Mr. Rugova, uh, we're very pleased to have you. Uh, I, uh, I remember our breakfast uh, in Pristina not too many months ago, uh, and it's, uh, it's uh, very good to, to see you and welcome you in Washington. Uh, Professor Pula, we are very pleased to have you. As, uh, as you know, we want you to, pre to submit your written presentation for the record and try to summarize your testimony. We are pleased to hear from you. Go ahead. Please pull the mic close to you. Very close. Uh, thank you. Honorable Chairman, Congressman uh, Lantos, Congressman Porter, Honorable Members of the Congressional Human Rights Foundation, Honorable Congressman and Senator, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let, me, let me first express my deep gratitude and appreciation for your esteemed invitation and your interest in the human rights issues in Yugoslavia, especially in Kosovo, where they have been violated most dramatically and almost beyond comprehension for the standards of the civilized Europe towards which we struggle as our principal objective. The principal cause for such drastic violation of human rights of Albanians in Kosovo rests in the fact that due to the historical circumstances during the formation of the newer nations in the Balkans, by the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century, just about half of the ethnic Albanians were left out of, uh, of, the, newly, of the former state of Albania and were encompassed within the kingdom of Serbia, respectively Yugoslavia. 
Ever since uh, within that framework, they've been treated as a foreign body into the majority, that is, into the Serbian national organism that threatens its interest and, they, and that uh, was to be eliminated from, from their so soil, forcefully or peacefully, officially or unofficially, quietly assimilated or politically neutralized and suppressed. The official policy, and even more so the actual governmental practice, carried on with a repressive approach uh, toward the Albanians in Yugoslavia. Such an approach produced vast and most drastic violation of individual human rights. Albanians not only in Kosovo, but in Yugoslavia in general, were subjected to countless violations of their individual human rights, which were meant and amounted to vast violation of their na national rights as well. Periods of fierce and less fierce violation of human rights of Albanians in Yugoslavia have changed on and off. For additional information uh, regarding this issue, a paper of mine, uh, which I present in the International Conference in Copenhagen, will be submitted for the record. Uh, but uh, I need to say that uh, one of the fiercest periods of repression uh, has, come, has come in, uh, in the 80s, during which, uh, according to officially released figures, at least 75 Albanians were killed by brutal police force interventions. Nevertheless, uh, the minority approach and the second-rate citizen treatment, which ever since the beginning of the century, uh, when Serbia uh, took over the ethnic Albanians in Yugoslavia, has been tried, uh, has been tried and enforced over the Albanians in Yugoslavia. This uh, this approach and the second-rate citizen treatment has definitely proven its bankruptcy. It couldn't have been different because Albanians in Yugoslavia are not and will not be, according to all demographic and civilizational determinants, a minority neither in relation to other nations in Yugoslavia nor to the Albanians in Albania proper. The proportion in both states is about one to one, whereas within the Yugoslav Federation with about 2.5 million people, Albanians are rated the third largest nationality. And this fact, fact is essential to the comprehension of the problem and to the potential to the dan dan uh, dangerous potential it carries if it's not resolved according to the substance it, uh, it has. Therefore, the way to overcome the very evident problem would be the insistence on establishing the rule of law, concerned with the genuine protection of the human rights of all individuals in Kosovo and Yugoslavia, regardless of nationality and confession. This would have to be combined with an orchestrated insistence of the international community, including uh, positive pressure that would influence Yugoslavia as a member state to observe and live up to the internationally accepted standards of human rights, uh, thus promoting a genuine parliamentary democracy with freedom of, freedom of speech, free enterprise, uh, political ex freedom of uh, political expression, and the rest that goes with it. A, uh, a great step in this direction would be the possible establishment of a U.S. consulate in Pristina. We need the U.S. presence in there. It's very essential. Uh, the establishment of a consistent and genuine autonomous consti constitutional uh, status of Kosovo, which would equally provide for the national interests of Albanians in Yugoslavia, just as in the case of other nations of Yugoslavia, could reach the objective. The course for reaching the objective of genuine equality of Kosovo and the human rights of its citizens in Yugoslav Federation, regardless of nationality and conf confession, may prove to be a difficult task, but in the long run it will be the only just stable and acceptable resolution of the issue in question. Genuine equality should be the name of the game. Nothing more, but nothing less either. And I have just uh, several more comments I would want to make, because a number, of complete, uh, a number of completely unfounded statements have been heard in this hearing. I do believe that the Honorable Congressional Human Rights Foundation will check out the facts prior to taking their stand and cross out uh, the false one because uh, they were just too many of them launched in this hearing. In the information age, uh, this can be checked out easily. And uh, we believe in it, and uh, we uh, commend the fact that the information age and democracy is doing away with uh, despotism and dictatorship on this earth. Uh, another sh brief comment. Uh, talking about uh, Serbian suffering in Kosovo and Serbia, in Yugoslavia, where the backbone of security apparatus, such as the police, military, as well as the greatest part of the administration, it consists of Serbian nationals, is completely, 
uh, is completely or to a very great extent unfounded, unfounded and hard uh, to believe, not to say unbelievable. And regarding the unfound, unfounded accusations such as irredentism, separatism, secessionism, terrorism, and even fundamentalism, I would say that the regime which uh, commits such uh, gross violation of human rights, which we will present in this report, uh, does not uh, have to and is not expected to be restrained from forging and uh, leveling false accusations intended to save face in front of the international community who can, does not and cannot condone such violence and state terror. And uh, last but not least, uh, maybe I should have done that in the very beginning, I'm sorry if I crossed the priorities, I have a personal message from uh, uh, Dr. Tsana, Secretary of our uh, Committee for the Protection of Human Rights and, and Freedoms. And uh, I should uh, uh, convey that personal message from Mr. Zakaria Sano, Secretary of our Committee, who could not be with us today because his human rights were once again violated by having his passport taken away by the Serbian authorities as he was charged with a notorious rubber pi paragraph one, uh, 133 for carrying on hostile propaganda, a commonly used nonsense in, or in, in orthodox Orthodox communist regimes. He sends to all of you, honorable ladies and gentlemen, his best regards, his gratitude and appreciation for the extended invitation and the interest you've shown for the issue. And uh, to the uh, gentlemen of the Congressional, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the Congressional Human Rights Foundation, uh, and to the great American nation which has uh, shown the interest and support for the cause of human rights over, all in the world, over including hopefully, and, and at last, uh, Kosovo or Yugoslavia. Besides this, he sends to this honorable auditorium our committee's latest report, our committee's latest report uh, on the most drastic cases of human rights violations on a day-by-day -day basis, on a blow-by-blow -blow basis, name-by-name -name basis, which I will submit for the record. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Je dois parler en albanais après, mais très court, Monsieur Chairman. To speak in Albanian and Gazman Fula will translate. Zoti Kretar. Honorable Mr. Chairman. Ju falenderojmë që në keniftuar të flasim në këtë altar të mendimit të lirë dhe të drejtave të njëriut dhe të demokracis. Well, we express our gratitude and appreciation, and appreciation for your invitation to call in this uh, Freedom House and to, uh, in this house where, where human rights and humanitarian affairs are the topic. Uh, you've, uh, you've shown the respect and, and the honor for the Albanian people wherever they live with this invitation and concern of yours. I will address only the issue of democracy in Kosovo because the democracy is, uh, is a human rights uh, belonging according to all internationally accepted standards. To this democracy, the Albanians in Yugoslavia chanted this uh, at the beginning of this year, but the price was their lives. Or Shqiptarët janë të vendosur që vetëm me demokraci dhe me mjetë e paqësore mund të zhidhet problemi i Kosovës. Nevertheless, Albanians are committed that only the dem democracy and democratic means will bring, bring about a resolution of the Albanian issue. The only, the only way of going ahead with dem democratic uh, movements is a dialogue which would uh, which would uh, take as partners uh, besides the authorities, the alternative political organizations in Kosovo, such as ourselves. 
Kras demokracis ta ken edhe autonomin dhe pavarësin e vetë në kuadër të Federatës Jugoslavës. Albanians insist as well that uh, besides uh, having the democratic mechanism and the democratic uh, governmental structure put in motion, they have also uh, granted their autonomy and their political subjectivity. Para sa ditësh, formalisht të hot gjendja jashtë zakonshme në Kosovë. Several days ago, the state of emergency in Kosovo was formally lifted. Nga qeveria federale from the federal authorities. Por kjo u zëvendësuar me, me gjendjen e jashtë zakonshme që do tjetë rregullt nga Republika Serbis. But this was uh, immediately replaced with a state of emergency from the Republican Republic of Serbia or Republican level with their police and uh, with the intention of turning the state of emergency into a regular state of affairs and business as usual practice in Kosovo. They are say, saying, or rather they are claiming that the rule of law is now governing in Kosovo. By I would rather say that the police state or the rule of police force is governing now in Kosovo. Observacionet mija rrëdh disa qështive që janë të propagandës të Serbe dhe të presit të Beogradit. Several comments of mine that would refer to that would refer to uh, the propaganda uh, approach to the Albanian, uh, issue, Albanian issue in Yugoslavia from the Belgrade uh, media. Kërkesen për demokraci dhe autonomi, kjo propagand përpichet të aparacet si konflikt religios, the the aspirations for democracy for democracy and autonomy of Albanians and uh, for democracy and autonomy in uh, the state of Yugoslavia this propaganda tends to present as a as a religious and ethnic conflict which is uh, not true because uh, in the confessional confessional sense uh, the Albanians are very tolerant because uh, all three major religions are present in the nation, in the Albanian nation. I would not uh, count them specifically, but they are the uh, Christian and Muslim uh, religion, both of them, and Orthodox, Orthodox and Roman Catholic their proportion being two-thirds and one-third. Tolerancen që kanë pasur brenda bashkësis vet e kanë gjithmonë e kanë treguar edhe ndajt e tjerëve. The tolerance that they have, the interconfessional tolerance that they have exercised within their own nation, they have exercised with their neighbors and with the other nations as well. Dhe po ashtu si një popull antik pas taj mesjetar kur ka qenë kristian, shqiptarët vazhdimisht kanë bajtur tolerancë në raportën me të tjerë. And uh, as, an, as an ancient nation, together with the Greeks, and as a medieval, medieval uh, nation, when they, were, when they were Christians before the Turks came and they stood on further on for a certain time, uh, they have shown great tolerance in their relations with, an, with the neighboring uh, medieval nations, so to say. Por propaganda serbe be pronk si soj, shqiptarët her i akuzon si jenë t'lidhur me Vatikanin, her me fundamentalizmin, e her me komintermen që gënë qenë për parë. But the Serbian propaganda acts like that. It accuses Albanians of being linked once with the Vatican, next time with the is Islamic fundamentalists, and the third time with the komintern from Moscow. Dhe në kot fundit, e kërkon që të, të identifikohet me, me fatin e popullit hebrej, me holokaustin hebrej, që së është e vërtet dhe s'ka të bej për kundrazi, e, gjithmonë kanë dëminuar në Jugoslavi dhe në Kosovë. And in the, the, in the, in the, uh, in the recent uh, years, since they found, find it suitable, they've tried to make parallels of uh, their issue with a, with a Jewish issue, but uh, of course, that does not uh, does not does not stand to be true, 
because uh, on the contrary, they have always been the ones very present in the government, in the security apparatus, and they have always been, so to say, the bosses, the people in charge, the nationality in charge, in Yugoslavia, so at least. Therefore, since this uh, propaganda is very tra transparent and it's uh, very evident, very unfounded, we, uh, we believe that uh, they will come to, the, to recognize the fact that the dialogue and the democratic means will be the only way of resolution of this question. Uh, we, the Albanian intellectuals, although in, in very, very uh, hard conditions, in grave conditions, so to say, under the state of emergency, have started out with a political organization on a democratic basis. And now you have, you have the situation in which uh, the Serbian authorities in Belgrade, as well as the, as the media run by these authorities in Belgrade, have, uh, have uh, launched uh, an intensive propaganda campaign trying to denounce and renounce these uh, democratic movements and winds that are blowing in Kosovo as well. In the end, I'd like to, to try to excuse myself for not writing my speech, my address to this honorable, honorable auditorium. But I did not do so because I had to go through the customs and through che through the checkout in the Bel Belgrade uh, airport. That is that has happened to me uh, before, and that could have happened, and that was about to happen to me this time too. But I was somewhat more stubborn and uh, did not. Uh, and avoided the thorough checkup. And this specific example is one more assertion and confirmation to the effect of uh, how, how uh, grossly and how harshly, egregiously, the human rights of Albanians in Yugoslavia are uh, violated and abused. I would uh, add, I would add uh, to this statement that uh, there are almost no Albanians in Yugoslavia left who have not been or have not received some kind of police treatment. One of, uh, one of such being Mr. Ugova himself. This does, uh, this does, this requires no comment, and I will end with a, with a proverb of, with an Albanian proverb, saying the good friend is to be proven in hard times. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> We are very pleased to have uh, both of you with us, and, uh, and we hope uh, you'll uh, uh, be able to, to stay and, uh, and visit uh, various parts of the United States before you return. You. I would next uh, like to ask uh, Mr. Anton Kolaj of the University of Pristina, with his interpreter, to come up to the, to the table and um, make his presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we have a brief statement to make, Please. and then he'll be available for questions. Please, before I, before I accept that statement, for the record, I would like to state that my colleague, Congressman Bonnier, who couldn't be with us, submitted a statement for the record, and the chairman will uh, 
will uh, so accept it. Please go ahead. Uh, for the record, uh, my name is John Lugier. I'm going to be translating and reading the statement on uh, professor's behalf. Before, before you begin, could I ask the audience to stop their demonstration? Thank you. Please go ahead. In the Ruri Zotic Retar, Mr. Chairman, in the Ruri Antart Congressit, and the distinguished Ruri Gazemra, Sam Kenilan Rastin, Tarafenit Vertet, the Idur, Che Priatoi, Popoli Shiptar and Koso Marastin is a limit. Chua Manton Kolei, Yam Gaklina, a Kosovas. Okay, Mr. Chairman, distinguished members of the caucus, I appreciate this opportunity to speak to you on behalf of an occurrence and incident that I had as one of the isolate, being a uh, person that had been isolated, experience, and I'd like to share this incident with you today. My name is Anton Kolai, and I'm from the city of Klin in Kosovo. I'm professor of philosophy and sociology. I'm a professor of philosophy and sociology. I'm a professor he, I am married and has two children, ages six and four. I'd like to continue by reading this statement in English, if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman. On March the 28th of 1989, at 5 a.m., Yugoslavian police surrounded my home. Using the bottom of their rifles, they pounded on my door. When I opened the door, the police stormed into my bedroom. I begged them to please be considered because my two children were asleep. They paid no attention to my request and proceeded to take over my house by pushing me around and searching throughout. The police behavior that evening has traumatized my family to where my son today remains in a state of psychological paranoia. Without an explanation, the police dragged me from my home and took me to their headquarters. In that evening, they handcuffed me and 40 other Albanian prisoners and placed us in a bus to Leskovit prison in Serbia. Please note that another three buses full of ethnic Albanian prisoners were also leaving for other prison, prisons. After the two hour bus ride, we arrived at the prison. The guards called out each individual's name and placed us one by one against the wall. This followed with severe beatings. Twenty guards surrounded me and proceeded to beat me with their nightsticks. This beating, which was the first of five, lasted for about five minutes. After this first beating, we were taken to another site where we registered. Once we were registered, I was again taken away by the guards, and in the presence of the local doctor, the guards proceeded to beat me. The guards had also invited local, local Serbian civilians to participate in this tragic event. The worst of these five beatings was when they stripped all of the prisoners and once again proceeded to beat us. They beat us over our heads and in the groin. Many of the prisoners who had fainted due to the severe beatings were splashed with buckets of cold water by the guards. When I explained to the doctor on site that I had a terrible heart condition, the beating was escalated. To date, I was never told why I had been apprehended, beaten, and imprisoned. Since my imprisonment, I have recurring nightmares, paranoia, and suffer from chronic depression. The above is a brief description of the first two days of the three-month jail term that I had suffered in Serbia last year. Uh, in addition to that, Mr. Chairman, he is one of the isol isolated persons who was able to hide his passport. Otherwise, if uh, he wouldn't have been here to testify today. Thank you. Congresswoman Bentley has uh, uh, one more statement she would like to have presented for the record. All right, Father uh, Yevtic from uh, Kosovo uh, wishes to give a, an additional statement uh, regarding the suffering of Serbian children in Kosovo. Father Yevtic. Please proceed. Slušajući o nedavnom stradanju albanske dece i mladih ljudi, 
kao čovek i hrišćanin želim da kažem. Mr. Chairman, Congressman Diagardi's words about the sufferings of Albanian children and young people prompt me to say that Žalim zbog patnje i smrti svakog ljudskog bića, pa i braće Albanaca, jer je za svako ljudsko biće Isus umro. That as a man and a Christian, I grieve for the suffering and death of every human being, and also for the death and suffering of my brother Albanians, because Christ died on the cross for every one of us. Ali se pitam... Imaju li Srbi na Kosovu decu, devojčice, majke, mlade ljude? But I ask myself and I ask you, are there no Serbian children in Kosovo? No Serbian mothers? No Serbian young people? Gde su bili ovi isti borci za ljudska prava, koje čujemo sada ovde, do jučerašnji članovi iste komunističke partije, kad su ne samo u ratu, nego posle rata do 88. godine srpska deca stradala, devojčice bile silovane, mladi ljudi srbi ubijani. Where were the foot soldiers of human rights? Not just during the war, but right up to 1988, when Serbian children suffered, Serbian girls were raped, young people killed. Nikada nisam bio član komunističke partije, a sva ova gospoda i azem vlasi su bili do nedavno. I have never been a member of the communist party. Each one of these gentlemen, including Mr. Azem Vlasi, have been so until quite recently. Gde su bili kad je pod njihovom vlašću autonomnom na Kosovu albanska većina tiranisala nedužne susede Srbe i njihovu decu? Where were they when under the rule of Mr. Azem Vlasi, for whose freedom you now fight here, when under his autonomous authority the same Albanian majority tyrannized the Serbs and their children? Tačno je da sada komunisti u Jugoslaviji i Srbiji ali nije to vlast srpskog naroda, čine nasilje i čak ubijanja na rebel demonstracije Albanaca. It is true that today the communist authorities are not the authorities of the Serbian people, but communist authorities in Kosovo and in Serbia do respond with violence and even killing to rebel demonstrations. Sadašnje vođe Albanaca, okrenuši čurak na opako, pretvorili su se u demokratije i očegno su rešili da živote neki svoji mladi ljudi žrtvuju. The current, the present leaders of Albanians who have now turned turncoats in relation to their political past, have decided to lay down the lives of some of their children. Decenijama su međutim koristili tu istu komunističku vlast nad nasiljem srpske dece, crkava i naroda na Kosovu i Metohiji. However, they have for decades used the same communist authorities in order to tyrannize Serbian children, Serbian Orthodox Church, the entire Serbian population. Sada hoće očigledno da žrtvama svoje dece odbrane ono što su nasiljem stekli. Now, evidently, they wish to defend with the lives of their children that which they have acquired by violence. Pomenuto je da su odvojena albanska i srpska deca u školama. Pitam zašto? It was mentioned that the Serbian children are segregated from the Albanian children. I wonder why. Zato što su decenijama srpska deca tiranisana, nažalost, od iste albanske dece. I know why. Because for decades the Serbian children suffered at the hands of the Albanian children. Pitam se ako se ostvari sutra famozna albanska demokratija na Kosovu, šta će biti sa srpskom decom? I'm asking myself what if tomorrow this much touted Albanian democracy comes to happen, comes to be in Kosovo tomorrow. What will happen to the Serbian children in Kosovo? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We are uh, we are moving to the to the end of uh, 
what has been a very extraordinary hearing. We have uh, one more panel of uh, witnesses, uh, and I'm asking uh, uh, Congressman Diogadi to, to present them. Thank you, Congressman Lantos. Uh, in the final panel, we're going to add two gentlemen that will make very short statements, but the, the gist of the panel will be Dr. Recep Chosun. I'd like Dr. Chosun to come to the, uh, the, the table. He's a professor from the University of Pristina, professor of literature. No demonstrations, please. Hands down, please. Yeah. And also, uh, Professor Lulieta Pula Picciri, She's the sister of Professor Gazman Pula. Is she here, uh, Professor Bichiri? Yes. She is uh, also a professor at the University of Pristina. And she's president of the Women's Association of the Democratic Alliance of Kosovo. And also, I'd like to, uh, would you sit in the middle, please? Uh, if she would move to the middle. I'd like uh, Mamadan Ramalaku, ambassador, former ambassador from uh, uh, Yugoslavia to the United States, an ethnic Albanian to be at the podium, and uh, Dr. Samir Rapishti. And we'll make this the final panel, and each have promised me, although they've come many, many miles, except for Dr. Rapishti, who lives here in the New York area. Um, and Dr. Rapishti has been uh, a historian uh, for Kosovo. And I see we have uh, Professor Pooler again for some interpretation. Again, the hour's late. We have hundreds of our uh, ethnic Albanians outside who want to greet you. And um, I know that, uh, and before I, you start, I want to again thank everyone for their patience. It is not easy to represent two points of view, which seems to be so disparate. But that's what this forum is all about, to hear both sides so that we can shed light, not heat, on the situation. Heat has been shed for 500 years and has gone nowhere. It's time that we try something new, and that's what this dialogue is all about. Hopefully this dialogue will be a signal to the authorities in Serbia and the voices of the Albanians in Kosovo to get together and finally settle their differences so people can live free. That is what I believe human nature and God's laws are all about. So with that, uh, Professor Chosha, keep your statement short. Submit longer statements for the record, please. Honorable Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, Professor Pula, pull a mic uh, fairly close pull to you. Pull the mics closer. And not, um, yeah. not too close. And by the way, I, I know that Professor um, Dr. Chosha has a written statement in English. So if he could start off with some Albanian, then you can take over and read the entire statement as opposed to going right. back and forth. I'm not a member of any party. I'm an independent intellectual. I have the pleasure of this uh, highly esteemed institution. That symbol is a symbolizes the best of par parliamentary democracy and of planetary justice to present some uh, facts and data about the 10-year-old terror of the Serbian authorities over the Albanians in Kosovo. My, uh, my text will be presented by the interpreter in this, our colleague interpreter in this case, me, myself. Years of state violence. Uh, honorable ladies and gentlemen, the historical memory of the Albanian people is full of old wounds, as well as new ones. In our history, there are periods which we call tragical, tragical, and among them, as a especially tragic one, the last decade will be remembered. Even before this time, we have tasted all the forms of violence brought up by the totalitarian communist regime. But the forms of violence which we have, we have suffered during the last decade in Kosovo are very diverse and very brutal. For 10 years now, we have been living under the state of emergency, which has been repeated three times, and which was held by, continu which was held, uh, by continuously more sophisticated means, methods, and instruments. These were years of the most cruel aggression against the elementary rights of the individual, 
the family and the Albanian people in general in Yugoslavia. During the 10 last years, the regime has deprived the right of living to more than 100 Albanians, including young, young and old, which could, not even bury them, which could not even be buried freely, nor could flowers be laid over their graves, nor, mark, nor their graves be marked down. Some several hundred persons were wounded by firearms, while only in January and February of this year, 204, 204 youngsters and children were wounded. Several Albanians were found shot dead on the roadside, some drowned in the rivers. Some were sent to their families in wooden boxes with explanations that they, were, that they had committed suicide by hanging themselves or by jumping from the prison windows. Some were never found. Many Albanians running away from the repression have found shelter in many countries of Western Europe and Turkey. Some more, uh, some more hundreds were taken in isolation in the prisons of Serbia, where they were physically abused as well as psychologically, where they had no right of defense and no right of family visits. According to official data up to uh, 1988 in Kosovo alone, the police and its courts uh, have given police treatment to 584,373 Albanians, against 70,000 of which charges were brought. But the exact picture of tragic dimensions of the violence committed by the regime against the Albanian people can be created if we add to this number that of the Albanians purged in Macedonia, Montenegro, in the Yugoslav army and in Kosovo after 1988, instead of producing valuable industrial goods. For 10 years, Kosovo has been producing Albanian political prisoners who filled Yugoslav jails. Their living conditions in, jail, in jails represent a special tragedy, although they are more, they are more bearable than the prelim, preliminary procedures at the police custody, which may last up to nine months. During the last years, we have endured the violence of a so-called differentiation. It is a demonic invention of Stalinism, to which party members must submit in other communist countries, while in Kosovo, the entire, entire Albanian people. In the name of this kind of segregation, to many of our children, the right to go to school or to study has been denied. To many teachers, their right, their right to work in schools and university, in universities. To many workers, their right to work and to many of our brothers, their right to be free. For years, we're afraid to speak up freely, but also to keep our mouths shut. We must speak what we don't believe in and not to speak what we believe in. We dare not dress up in red and black, the color of our national flag. We're not free to give, to give the names we like to our children, nor to honor the names of the culture we honor. We are not free to meet each other freely, visit some friends at their, some friends at their homes, or have them come to ours. The preventive censorship hurts seriously our spiritual creativity, and the knockings of the police on the doors of our homes or offices hurt heavily the health, health of our people. We have become today a people that solidly thinks on how to, sur how to survive. There is no higher sense for them to seek, because when they seek more national rights, we are called nationalists. When we seek a higher degree of equality, we are called separatists. When we seek political rights and free elections, they call us terrorists. Although there is never violence into our hands, and in all these cases they imprison, they wound, and kill our youth, our futures. Anything we seek, they declare us guilty, because for the Serbian regime, we are guilty for being as many as we are, and for living where we live ever since history knows for us. This is how it was until now, but how it will be tomorrow. On April, on April 17th, the state of emergency in Kosovo was declared regular by Serbia thus making a tragic situation permanent. We may now say what we like about the state, but the state, as up to now, can do anything it wants with our people. The victory of force over the right and justice has been declared le legal, just as the violent ru ruining of the autonomy of Kosovo last year was declared legitimate. The great American statement, statesman of uh, 18th century, Patrick Henry said, I know of no other way of judging the future but from the past. If we are to lean on our past experience in Kosovo, I may say, for our individual and collective rights, for our exist existence as a people, another period of insecurity is about to begin. And in this period, our, our, being, may, our being may tragically be devaluated if our destiny in the Yugoslav Federation is not guaranteed in a way the destiny of other people in Yugoslavia is guaranteed. 
is the status of the republic, if, if the status of the republic is not recognized to Kosovo. Yugoslavia as a federation is built on the ethnical principle and the rights of the individual and citizens in it are conditioned by the rights of the people. Honor, honorable ladies and gentlemen, God has not yet looked after the Albanians, but when their intellectuals are invited to be heard by such a high institution with a planetary moral might such as this one, we may hope that finally the almighty God too will grant them his look of love. Let it be so. Thank you for listening to me with attention. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Okay, uh, Professor Lieta Pula uh, Again, she's the president of the Women's Association of the Demo Democratic Alliance of Kosovo and works very closely with Dr. Ibrahim Rogova. We're very pleased to have you. Zonia de Zotrin. Honorable ladies and gentlemen. Fiala ime rastit, yersh shpandar kti tubimi. My own. Dota shfridzo e rastin, që të prezentoj edhe disa momente që nuk janë përshir në te. My opening statement has been uh, distributed in this uh, honorable institution, but I will, uh, I will uh, uh, use the opportunity in which to make several remarks I wasn't able to present in the paper. Prezentoj grate Kosovës të organizuar në shoqatën e cila funksiona në kuadrë të lidhjes demokratike të Kosovës. I am the president and the chairman of the, uh, of the Women's, Democratic, uh, Women's Association of the Democratic Alliance in, of Kosovo. Tani për tani, ajo numron 80.000 antar. Up to now, it, uh, its membership goes as high as 80,000 members. Kjo shifër impozante e cila gjdo ditë rritët ja gjdo parashikimi dëshmon më smiri për faktin se represioni që ushtrohet në bipopullsin e pafajsh me shqiptare në Kosovë ka arritur atë shkall alarmante sa që të aktivizoj e të mobilizoj një shtres naturalisht politikisht imobile si që janë grat dhe atë grat e të gjitha kategorive. The number of the members which are, which are cons consist, uh, consistently rising is a proof to the, to the effect that uh, the drastic human rights violations and, the, and abuses to which the Albanian population in Kosovo is subjected has, uh, has achieved, has moved uh, uh, a traditionally uh, not very mobile segment of a society such as women of all social and social layers. Flas pra në emër të nënave kosovare. I'm talking on behalf of the Albanian mothers. Ne angazhojemi kunder zgjidhjes problemit Kosovës me dhun e represion. We are, enga we are engaged for the resolution of the Albanian uh, problem in Yugoslavia without repression and with democratic means. Dhe mendojmë se zgjidhja permanente e problemit Kosovës mund të arrihet vetëm me dialog me alternativën kosovare e cila tani më është dëshmuar dhe ka fituar legitimitetin we think that the Albanian issue in Yugoslavia uh, can be resolved only in the in dialogue of the authorities with the alternative political organizations of Kosovo, such as ourselves, uh, in, a, in a democratic dialogue which will uh, bring up uh, an, an impartial and uh, all-sided uh, view of the problem. Sepse pa pjesmari në aktive të subjektit shqiptar, gjdo zgjidhje është para prakisht e dënuar të dështoj. Because without the, the active engagement of the political subjectivity of the Albanians, every other solutions, solution that might be imposed by force or otherwise is destined or doomed uh, to fail. Jemi për demokraci parlamentare, për zgjedje të lira, sistem shumë partijak, për pranimin e subjektivitetit politik të popullis shqiptar, për barazit të plot me gjithë popuj të tjerë të Jugoslavis dhe për pranimin e subjektivitetit politiko-juridik të Kosovës, i cili do të duhet të sankcionohet me shprejhjen e lirë të vullnetit politik të popullit. We are, we are for free elections, we are for the free, freedom of speech, freedom of press, in one word, for a parliamentary democracy. We are for the establishment of a, of a just constitutional status of Kosovo that would grant equality to the Albanian population, to Kosovo and the, within the Yugoslav Federation, to a, uh, to a political subjectivity which will be the same and equal as to that of the other nations in Yugoslavia. I will express on this occasion a widespread opinion among the, among the Albanians of Kosovo. E ajo është se forcat unitariste të autoriteteve serbe ushtrojnë teror të pa kuptushëm bi populatën e pafajsh me shqiptare me qëllim të paramenduar mirë të nëzitjes e shpërthimit masiv të revoltës 
që më pastaj do të shfrydzohe i si kasus beli për e presalje shtetrore dhe qërim brutal hesapesh me populatën shqiptare. This widespread opinion among the Albanians uh, is that uh, the authorities, the Serbian authorities, the dark forces within the Serbian authorities do apply this uncomprehensible police violence and state terror over the Albanians in order to incite a popular, uh, popular revolt uh, on behalf of the Albanians, which would in turn then be used as a casus belli or as a pretext for a much larger scale or a massive, massive scale massacres and reprisal, reprisal of Albanian, po, Albanian population in Yugoslavia and push, a, push a, a, away once more and hopefully for longer the democratization of the democracy that is, be, that is sweeping Europe and is reaching Kosovo as well. Konsiderohet se kjo opcion hegemonisë sërbomadh konsiston në pengimin e demokratizimit dhe mbajtjen e vazhduar të gjendjes konflikte dhe të tensionit në Kosovë dhe në përmjet të mbajtjes së Kosovës me terror e dhunë, shek të vetme në mundësi për t'i zgjatur jetën një politike tërsisht të dështuar, e cila nuk i soli as nuk do t'i siel as gjë të mirë, as Kosovës e as Jugoslavis, dhe si e til para qëtë rezik të madh për Balkan dhe Europë. This seems to be the only approach by which the orthodox... Uh... Uh, the orthodox part of the, of the communist regime in Serbia wants and intends to push away the democratic winds in order to, manip to, manipulate, uh, to manipulate even their own population, the Serbian population, with the fact of, of, the, of the alleged, uh, of the alleg alleged uh, allegedly jeopardized national, Serbian national interest in Kosovo in order to put away the real problem which the Serbian population as well has, not only in Kosovo, but in, Ser in Serbia proper as well, and to, and to uh, keep on to hold on to the power. They think that uh, this uh, seems to be the only, the only way, but the way which has not brought anything good neither to Yugoslavia nor to Serbia, <coughs> and of course at least to, to, uh, to Kosovo. Ky opcion mund të kuptohet edhe si nevoj për tërheqin e vëmendje së opinionit sërb nga problemet e vetat të brëndshme, si form standarde e regjimeve komuniste duke përfshirë prodhimin permanent dhe manipulimin me pasione nacionaliste. This seems to be the standard orthodox communist regime's approach by which to turn the attention of, the, of their own people to the outside enemy, to the outside enemy and to the to, uh, to the national interest being uh, jeopardized, being endangered by the outside forces. Kymendim të jetë prezent në popullsin shqiptare në Kosovë, mbështetet në vrasjet brutale, plagosjet, rafjet, torturat, burgimet, bastisjet, helmimet masive të nëzënësve dhe shumë format të tjera të dhunës e egrë policore të pakuptushme për Europën e civilizuar. This opinion among the Albanians is uh, based and supported on the uncomprehensible police violence against the Albanians on the brutal killings, woundings, maltreatments, harassment, uh, unwarranted house raids, uh, beatings, and even the massive poisoning of uh, the Albanian uh, high school and elementary school students in the recent, uh, recent days. How much longer is the witness's testimony? Because we would like to wrap up fairly soon. One more comment. Të drejtat njerëzore të fmive grave dhe familjeve në tërsi, në Kosovë, shkilen brutalisht dhe në mënyrë konsistente e sistematike për qarësy me të drejt kërkojmë një mbikëqyri e ndërkomtare. The human rights of uh, women and children in Kosovo are being consistently and systematically abused and violated to that extent that we do uh, ask for an independent international commission to, uh, that would uh, come and, and survey what's going on and take their stand on the matter. Do të më vinë të mirë, po tjetë e mundur që fondacionit i parashtroj këto dëshmi plëtsuse për shkeljen e këtyre të drejtave që i përmenda. I will be glad to present the, uh, the Honorable Congressional Human Rights Foundation with the following evidence that will support my presentation. Një numër fotografisht e njerëzve të goditur nga dhuna brutale policore. A number of photographs of the, of the people uh, being affected by the, uh, by the police violence in Kosovo. Një inqizim në videokaset të një vajze të helmuar 18 vjeqare dhe pasojat e helmimit të saj të cilën e solin nëna e saj antare e shoqatës son.
a vid video cassette recording of the poisoning attacks that uh, an 18 year old girl has suffered in her, in her home and has been recorded by members of her family and was brought to me by the lady which is a member of our women's association. Një raport mjekësor të për kronologjin e nëzënzve të hospitalizuar në Kosovë. A, re a report uh, of the recent poisoning of students and children in Kosovo. Raport i konziliumit spitalit në Prishtin, lidhur me simptomatologjin e këhelmuarve i nënshkruar edhe nga mjekët sërb të cilët pasaj ho qëndor nga i. A report, a report of the consilium of the Pristina University Hospital in which the consilium of doctors, which consists of uh, Serbian and Albanian nationals, 50% 50 uh, each, have signed and, uh, and uh, uh, described the symptomatology of the poisoning that has taken place in Kosovo these last recent, recent days. Incisimi në video kaset të vrasjes së 17 vjeçarës Ylfete Kumolli nga Podujeva, që është prezentuar në ditarin e televizionit Prishtinës, ku shihet vrasësi, ndërsa në raportin e gjërë të cilin e dha Këshilli Ekzekutiv Federativ lidhur me këtë, thuet së është vrarë në rëthanat pa njohura. A video kaset recording of the killing of a 17-year-old girl Ylfete Kumolli, which, uh, which was made by a, by a TV Sarajevo crew accidentally, who happened to be there, and uh, which accord and for uh, which uh, for which case the officials uh, the federal officials have said that it has uh, it has taken uh, it has happened in uh, unclear un in unclear circumstances një numër deklarat a shrënqes së të fmive dhe grave të familje së bastisur gubetini nga Nedakovci të cilat kishin të me qenë të mira për rubrikën besuat ose jo në Kosovë a number of, of written personal declarations about the human rights violations, drastic human rights violations that these individuals of the Gubetini family in Nedakovs have been subjected to, and which would be would be uh, very very fitting for the for the believe it or believe it or not uh, Ripley rubric. Okay, we will accept all these for the record. Are there many more? Because we have... And uh, so the declaration of the and the photographs And 70 written declarations about the cases of uh, poisoning cases. Then the fund will not be able to see the consideration of the vulnerability of the government to the government and the government to 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 the the and uh, last but not least, let me express my gratitude and appreciation, appreciation for the interest you've taken into in this issue. And uh, we, believe that only, we believe that only the international pressure about uh, observation and the observation of human rights will uh, bring up a resolution of the question, in, in, of the question that we've discussed. I samo još jednu stvar. Čula su se nekoliko pitanja ovdje i ukoliko bude vremena, ja sam spremna da na njih dajem odgovore, ako ste vi spremni da me saslušate. And my final comment is that... Uh, my final comment is that the questions that have, that have been raised here in this uh, hearing and that uh, have been uh, addressed to us, if if uh, the Honorable Auditorium is ready to listen, I will be ready to answer. Okay. We thank you very much for your presentation. Let me just uh, caution the balance of the panel that we have run about two and a half hours beyond our allotted time. The Chair will have to leave very shortly, and I will have to ask you to make your statement as brief as possible. I, I have to second that, and I, I know Dr. Rapish, the Originally, he was supposed to testify, but with so many people coming over from Kosovo, we felt it was appropriate to let the representatives there speak. And I know how eloquent you can be and how many statements you've made, but if you can really be very short and submit your statements for the record, we would really appreciate it. Um, and if you pull the mic up, Bob. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I am submitting my written statement for the record with your permission. Uh, I have very little to say. The problem of Kosovo is political and human. I have lost two people during World War II, including my father. I have spent 11 years in jail, in communist jails of Albania and Yugoslavia. I am therefore very sensitive to the violation of human rights. 
I will say only the following. A week ago, Adem Demachi, which we call the Nelson Mandela of Kosovo, was released. We are very pleased with it. Last year, I believe it was in June, we, uh, he gave an interview to the semi-official newspaper Borba in Belgrade. I'll try to relate the best of my uh, ability. Question, what do you think about the Serbs? Demachi, Serbs are a generous people with a glorious past. Question, we are told that you hate the Serbs. Demachi smiles, right, Borba, and answered, if danger would threaten my son or a Serbian neighbor, I would tell the danger, take my son. This is the terrorist, quote unquote, Demachi, who spent 27 years in jail. Mr. Chairman, I cannot find a greener branch of olive than this. Today, I take that olive branch and I appeal to all my Serbian friends, let's work together for freedom, for democracy, and general prosperity. Together, we will succeed. Divided, we will both perish. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ramadan, just a couple of words, and please. Mr. Chairman, I would like to thank you, sir, for receiving us here in this most democratic institution in the world, Congress of United States of America. I would like to say this. I have served my country, Yugoslavia, for 30 years, and I'm proud of that. I'm going to do that, that again. If somebody is going to put me a question, I will tell. I was a communist for 35 years. Yes. And I, if somebody is going to ask me why, I will tell. I believed in Marxism. If Helen is going to, uh, to ask me, do I believe today, I will say no. I don't believe in Bolshevism. I don't believe in uh, Leninism anymore. Right. <laughs> uh, I've joined, I've, I've dissociated myself from the uh, present policies of my government because the, my people, ethnic Albanians, in Yugoslavia are oppressed. And repression is, uh, uh, for a long time ago, have been uh, uh, the institution of government in, in, uh, implying on uh, ethnic Albanians. It's very sad to me that. And it's very sad to me to see my neighbor Serbs in other side and we sit in, in, other, in another side. Let me say this, uh, 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 Congressman uh, Lentos. I've been grown up in the village where we lived together, Serbs and Albanians, for 80 years. And we have lived uh, as a good, very, no good, very good neighbors up to last three, four years. We are not divided. And that is sad to me, very sad to me. When I used to go to my village, my neighbor Serbs used to greet me in Albanian, and I used to greet them in Serbian. Okay. No, it's not goodwill. I would appeal to all people of goodwill from the Serbian part and from Albanian part to get together to sit down, to make a dialogue, and to make life better in Kosovo and Yugoslavia. If my compatriots from Kosovo were a separatist, I can assure you, Senator Lentos, I wouldn't have joined them. But we want to change the present situation and to make Yugoslavia a democratic society where all together, Serbs, Albanians, Croats, Slovenians, and others can live together. We don't like, and it's going to, uh, we don't like, and we don't want to be pe uh, part to participate in uh, Albanians in Yugoslavia in disintegration of, of Yugoslavia. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Yes. Let me, uh, let me, uh, before I call on, uh, on uh, my two colleagues for whatever closing comments they would like to make, uh, uh, let me thank all of the witnesses uh, during the course of this uh, five-hour hearing. Uh, a great many things were said 
we will need to ponder and think through and digest an enormous amount of material, a great deal of emotion, uh, before the chair offers his concluding remarks, uh, I'd like to call on Congressman uh, Diogardi. Well, I would uh, like to conclude before I just introduce some people who came a long way and I've gotten notes from other people who we could not hear as much as we would like, as you can see, the patience of the chair. This, I, have, I spent four, four years in Congress and I can tell you that I don't remember any hearing where the chair was so patient to go over as he's been and uh, I really appreciate that, Congressman Lantos. <coughs> but I should end <coughs> with a reference, Congressman Lantos, to an article that I just quickly alluded to in my testimony. And this article is dated Wednesday, April 18th, 1990. It's entitled, Perspectives on Eastern Europe, Ethnic Troubles, Top Agenda for New Eastern European Regimes. It's not by a Serb and it's not by an Albanian. It's by a respected uh, columnist from Vienna, Eric Bourne. And just let me read just the last part of it, and I'd like to submit the whole thing for the record, Mr. Chairman. It says, the Yugoslav party was not directly involved in the general communist collapse, but it has felt a strong backlash from the return to democracy, above all over Kosovo. The province has as many Albanians as Transylvania has Hungarians. Since the Tito era closed in 1981, it has constantly hovered on the brink of, and often slipped over into, civil war. Parallels go beyond numbers. Transylvania's Hungarians look for their lost rights, not reunion with Hungary. Similarly, and this is not Jody Aguadi speaking, similarly, few Kosovars look toward Albania. However much a greater Serbia-minded Serbian leadership in Belgrade argues to the contrary. What Albanians riot for is the return of the autonomy of the 1970s and their future status of a republic within the Federal Republic of, of Yugoslavia. Czechs, Poles, Slovaks, and Hungarians all seem concerned to resolve their problems. But with Kosovo, Yugoslavia is the odd man out. Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev has a bigger problem in Lithuania, but he has at least hints at possible compromise in a looser Confederate Union. In Kosovo, there has been no talk even of dialogue. Helsinki Watch called Serbian and Yugoslav federal policy there, quote, a frightening example of one party dictatorship, close quote. It is ironic that the country that broke first with the Soviet system and established equality among its nationalities for 40 years should now have Eastern Europe's gravest ethnic problem. This just appeared last week and I want to submit the entire article for the record, Mr. Chairman. Now, before I close, let me say that we could not hear from uh, Mr. Leka Lujurai, and by the way, he's here, he traveled from Montenegro, he's a representative of the Albanians in the Montenegrin parliament, and the only comment I have here that I should say is that he is paid $25 a month, but his colleagues, who are Montenegrins, get a few hundred dollars a month. This is the kind of discrimination against Albanians, even outside of Kosovo today, in the country of Yugoslavia. But let me then end by referring to others today who came a long way, who thought they would testify, but Mr. Chairman, please accept their statements for the record, and let me no, at least Chair. mention who they are. You've got Dr. Shkelzin Malici, he's um, the president of the League of Philosophers and the sociologist of Kosovo, and his co-chairman is Dr. Isof Borisha, and he's here as well. We have Halil Matoshi, who was let out of jail just in time to get on the plane to come here. We thought Dr. Sana would join him, but they did not see fit to do that with him. But he is the president of the youth parliament, Halil Matoshi. We've got um, the, um, we've heard from Lulietta Pulabichiri. We've got the president of the Democratic Association of Farmers in Kosovo here, Dr. Hivzi Islami. We've got the president of the Independent Trade Union of Kosovo, that's uh, Hai, Hai Gorani. Uh, we also have a retired general from the Yugoslav army, an uh, ethnic Albanian who now is running in the elections in Croatia, uh, Tom Borisha, who I had the pleasure of meeting in Slovenia. Uh, and we have uh, Professor Gazman Zaimi. And also, and I shouldn't say last but le not least, we've got two others, uh, a, a partner in the Democratic Alliance of Kosovo, Yusuf Puchovi, and uh, Dr. Idrez Ayeti, who is the president of the Council for the Defense of Human Rights and Freedoms in Kosovo, 
kind of a co-chairman with Dr. Tsana, and he allowed uh, Professor Pula to make the statement for him. I hope I didn't miss any others. I just want to mention three others that came from far away, believe it or not. We have people who landed this morning from New Zealand, an ethnic Albanian, Mazda Krasnici, and one who landed from Australia, where there are 30,000 Albanians in Melbourne alone, Max Safari, and also uh, Emir Bardi from Dallas. So, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted you to know the price of freedom does not come easily. These people came all the way to see this in action, to see democracy in action, so that one day, and don't forget, when Ibrahim Rogova first thought about the Democratic Alliance, he went to Ambassador Zimmerman and requested the Constitution of the United States of America as a model. I believe these people are here today because they want this room and this hearing to be a model for the whole world, especially in Kosovo. Well, on behalf of the Congressional Human Rights Caucus, I want to thank all the witnesses and all of you here in this hall. We have been here for five hours. And when the emotions subside, and as we move towards the resolution of these very deep-seated problems, and we will move towards a resolution peacefully and democratically and diplomatically, the memory of this uh, five-hour hearing with all its pain and all its anguish will go down as a historic episode as the people of uh, the great country of Yugoslavia learn to live together in peace and harmony. This hearing is adjourned.